Hi guys, the Angie Bell with My Fairy Treasures. All right, let's make sure. Yeah, my video's going. Okay, let me make sure I'm in frame. Okay, you guys, I'm starting another. I'm working in my. What is this? My altered book for my art journal, and the altered book that I like to use for my art for my um, altered book art journal is a sketchbook. You can use a regular book, you know, with print and everything on it, which I've done lots of times. But I've said before, I've had um, these sketchbooks that I just wasn't using, so I'm turning them into art journals and make them into altered books to art journal in. All right, just a second. Let me see what the heck is going on. Maybe I will come up just a little. Okay, no. There we go. Maybe we'll do that, and then I'll adjust it as we go down. So this is this is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish. I want to work on one, two, and then get my other book out because this will be wet four different pages all at the same time. I want to work on backgrounds and not worry about focal points. Oh, we'll do focal points. At, we'll do four focal points at a time for all four pages after we get done doing these backgrounds. But I want to focus on just doing four backgrounds specifically because I want to do all my collaging, you know how I always do, gesso. And then I want to um, play around with these Distress Oxides. So I have a ton. So some of these are Distress Inks, but a lot of them are Distress Oxide. I try to pull out all my Distress Oxides. So I'm just going to show you. That's a Distress Oxide. That's a Distress Ink. That's a Distress Ink. That's a Distress Oxide. And I kind of have them in piles of like the colors kind of all go together. Okay, this is um, Distress Ink, Old Paper. Distressed ink, uh, old corduroy, and distressed ink, scattered straw. And I don't, I really want to do distressed oxides, but I'll, I'm mixing in the distressed inks because a lot of these distressed inks I haven't used either. So I want to like combine, combine them together. This is um, walnut stain distress oxide and play around with my um, distress oxide and my distressed inks. This is vintage photo distress oxide. This is gorgeous. This is Distress Ink. I wish I had it in the Stress Oxide. It's uh, Aged Mahogany. This color is gorgeous. This is Rusty Hinges Distressed Ink. So I obviously can't use all of these, but I pulled all these. Okay, this is Distressed Ink Wild Honey, Pilled Paint, and Crushed Olive. And then um, this, is dust, this is Distressed Ink Dusty Concord. Distressed Ink Tattered Rose, Distressed Ink Victoria Velvet, and Distressed Ink Spun Sugar. I wish I had all of those in the Distressed Oxides, if they have them in the Distressed Oxides. So. And then I have some sprays. I might use some of these too. This one is Distressed Spray Stain Faded Jeans. These are all Distressed Spray Stains. Okay, this is Old Paper. This is Mermaid Lagoon, which sounds really pretty. And then this is Wild Honey. So I might use some of these. So I pulled these two because I don't even know what these look like. I haven't used those. But there's a lot of these Distress Oxides I haven't used yet or I haven't used them in combination with each other. So I've been wanting to do this. So really want this. What this is, is a chance to play with my Distress Oxides, Distressed Inks, and Distress Sprays. Okay. Let me stop explaining myself over and over and let's get started. All right, let me get out my homemade Mod Podge. Um, okay. Oh, and the other thing I did is I, I just grabbed one folder at a time. I, I, took a folder and I pulled a bunch of stuff that I could first because first thing I'm going to do is of course collage and then we'll do the distress oxides over the entire collage and that really changes everything and just you know makes everything look really cool so I pulled a bunch of collage elements and I did it for all four pages so for the first page I put everything I'm going to put on here then I have another folder full of collage bits for this page and then so on so I'm going to pull all these collage bits out of this folder and how I'd like to do it, I'll show you. I like to pile it in the order that I'm going to be using it. 
just a second. Like this is going to go, it's not going to go on top of there. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's how I like to pile my stuff up and just leave it on the side. And that way I can just go in the order and do my collaging. That's what I like to do. Okay. And before we're going to start on this page on this is page we're going to start on and do our first set of collage. Um, but before I do that, I, I always like to glue two pages together when you're doing an altered book. So let me glue these two pages together really quickly. I've said this a million times. I love working out of an altered book for my art journal. I like it better than buying art journals. And I believe me, I have art journals that I've bought. In, and I work in those. But I love the altered books. I don't know why. Maybe I feel more freedom in them. That's probably what it is. Okay. Just a second, guys. I have this clippy in my hair. I have my hair clipped up. And I think it's giving me a headache. I don't know. We'll find out. I've been waking up the last two mornings with a headache. I think it's, you know, it's all this stress from this, um, from this virus. It's just like, I know it's stressing everybody out. And I won't talk about it too much because I know you came here probably to escape that. So we won't go on and on, but I guess that's why we do our art because it will help us with our stress. Okay, just a second. I'm looking for either a little card or a scraper or something. Do I have something or not? Hmm. Okay. I can't believe I had to dig this far to find a card. everyone's doing well out there that everyone's doing their social distancing and I hope that you are taking care of yourself all right so let's start on this page over here Let me move my stuff over and we will yeah, I can move this over and I always have a baby wipe handy especially when I'm collaging because you know we're dealing with glue. Okay. I'm just trying to get myself straight here. We'll just go like this for now. Hopefully you can see when I get down there. Okay. Let's begin. Alright. So we'll start out with some music note paper. And for all four collage pages, um, I pretty much have the same background going. You know, I'm starting out with the same papers, and then they change. And what I mean by that is I start out with, you know, music note paper, book pages, which is what I start out everything with. With my collage -y bits. And a lot of the collage bits um, get covered up. But they always peekaboo through, which I think just all the layers adds magic to the piece. So I love having all those collage bits, even if a lot of them get covered up. It adds, I think it adds the magic. And there's always some that peekaboos through, which really adds to your work. When you have those little bits peeking through here and there. And you know, we're all talking about our nerves are kind of on edge. You guys get out some collage bits and just start. I mean, maybe this won't work for you, but it works for me. I, it relaxes me to, um, just glue crap down. <laughs> yeah, I am not just gluing crap down. I am doing it in an organized manner. <laughs> not that you have to do an organized manner. You can just glue stuff down. I mean, and it can, it'll still turn out cool. 
But I do have a plan. But you don't have to have a plan. Um, but it's just, to me, it is so relaxing to just rip paper. Even the sound of ripping paper, I love it. And then just gluing paper down. I love it. And maybe that's why I thought to do a project like this because there's just like this point, right? Any of it's just not going to be a whole lot of thought process in it. It's just going to organically come together, which I think when things can organically come together, it's just less stress on your brain. Don't you just love that ASMR, that ripping a paper? <laughs> Somebody's going to be on here like, no, I think that's annoying. But anyway, I like ripping a paper. I've told this story a million times, but I'll say it again. When I was uh, in elementary school, um, I loved creative writing. I did not like math whatsoever. I learned to like math as I got older, like when I was in college, actually. But anyway, I won't go into that story. But when I was in elementary, I couldn't stand math. Like, it drove me nuts. I didn't understand it half the time. Like, it, it confused my brain. But I loved creative writing. I loved learning how to write in cursive. And my favorite thing was when the teacher would say, okay, you guys, we're going to do some collage. I would. This is what I would think in my head. Oh, my goodness, teacher. Finally something worth doing in this classroom. Like, why weren't we collaging before, you know? <laughs> When she said collage, oh my goodness, I was in heaven. I would get out the biggest poster board ever that we had in the classroom. And I would have the biggest stack. We had magazines in the corner. I would have the biggest stack of magazines. Oh, I was in my heaven. And when she said we have to stop collaging and do something else, I would be like heartbroken. <laughs> I probably, she said, we're going to do some math. I probably start crying. No, not math. <laughs> anyway, that's what I, I really thought. I thought, oh, finally something worth doing in this classroom. <laughs> I didn't think math was. <laughs> anyway, it was funny. So you can see the collage bits I used. I used, right now, this is some um, Asian um, newspaper I got from Chinatown. I went there, I've gone there and I picked up like probably 10, they have like four or five different papers like at this um, Asian grocery store. So I picked up two of each, three of each, something like that. And um, so I have a nice big stack of Asian newspapers because I love their print. I think it's just beautiful. Um... Hopefully you guys can see, let me see something. There we go, I think that's better right there. Let me see if I bring this back. There we go, you can pretty much see to the bottom. And then this is, um, I don't know what language this is, but I love this print here. Um, I love, this is just book pages, dictionary pages, dictionary pages, and then music note pages. And I feel like I need a little bit more music notes. So let me just throw a little more music notes in here to break this up over here. There we go. Do I want it on this side? We'll go on this side. And you guys, I'm so excited. Um, this video will probably be an hour. I think I, I, I found some editing software. Yay for me! <laughs> Because you guys know me in editing. And um, I think I can now take two 30-minute videos and put them together. So I can have one video. So I don't have to say, okay, my video's cutting off. Yeah, I think I got that down. I'm not promising anything, but I was experimenting with yesterday, and I think I have that down. So, very excited about that. Okay. All right. So we're done with that little pile of that first pile. And let's go to the next pile that I have. This is some Tim Holtz. Oh, I love this. Look how gorgeous. I've been waiting to use this. 
This is Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love it. And am I working? Okay. I was wondering if I was working too far from the camera, but this book is huge. I can't, I can't work close or you guys won't see what I'm doing. So hopefully, you know, being this far away from the camera is going to work out. Okay. So let's just put this right here. Oh, this is so beautiful. And what I like about it, it's tissue paper. It, it works just like a napkin, of course, or like when you're going down tissue paper. And um, you can see through it. So you can see the layers. You guys know I'm all about the layers and layers and layers. And even being able to see through your layers. I love that. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, we know, Angela, we know. <laughs> oh, this is gorgeous. You can just see right through it. So you can see the layers right through it. I absolutely love this. This is my first time using them his tissue papers. I got a bunch. I got so lucky. Um, some of you guys were able to take advantage of it too. Um, Hobby Lobby with their 75% off was clearancing out the tissue paper, the rolls of tissue paper. And, um, oh, I was lucky. I was able to, between two stores, I was able to get pretty much two of each one. I was really excited. Okay. These are the things that excite me, people. These are the things. Okay. Another thing that I just love. I think I'm going to do it now. Should I? Yeah, um, this right here, this is supposedly from, this is from Daiso, and supposedly this is like a wrapping paper, but it's like in between tissue paper and a dryer sheet. Weird. But look how um, beautiful, look how um, like, um, what am I trying to say? Very vintage old world it looks. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to, and it rips. You can just rip it really easily. So I'm going to rip it a little bit so it doesn't look too square. I don't want it square looking. Okay. And we're going to lay that down. And what I like about it, it acts just like the tissue paper or napkins. You can see right through it. So you can see the layers. It's fabulous. Very Paris, like very Parisian looking. That's what I wanted to say. Does that look very Parisian? The writing looks Parisian. The little crown. Just everything. The perfume bottle on there. Love it. And just like napkins, you can see right through it. So I just love it. Just a second. Let's just straighten that out. There we go. It just lays down really nicely. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that looks really pretty. Okay, so next. Next, I want to go to some scrapbook paper that I want to use. So I have this right here. I love it. So we're going to put that right here. I think. Sure. I haven't used this one that much because it has a black background, but I thought, you know what? I want to, I just want to be very experimental and do it. This was some um, scrapbook paper that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. It has butterflies. I think it's gorgeous. So let's just throw some butterflies here and there. Okay. Throw that butterfly right on top of there. that right there um, this is just a little music note right here which I think could look really cool so we'll put that there some scrapbook paper and that's another thing that's a whole nother layer um, get your get your scrapbook paper out and um, use some scrapbook paper in your backgrounds we all have so much scrapbook paper you might as well um, use them in your backgrounds because you're never going to use all that scrapbook paper. And I almost, I know what you're thinking, like, oh my God, I don't want to waste it in collage because you want to make cards out of it or whatever. <clears throat> this is how I look at it. Especially if you do a lot of mixed media or even if you do a little bit of mixed media. You have so much paper. Are you ever going to really use all that paper? No. So you might as well use it in something, your mixed media, like be able to extend your extend the use 
of your scrapbook paper. That's what I say. Okay, this is gorgeous. This came on a roll. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that so pretty? It's um, world map, and I love the color. Let me do a little bit of ripping here so it's not... Okay, I think I'll put that right here. Yeah. We just add a little glue down there. So it... Okay, so I'm going to see if I want to use any other paper. Yeah, I'm going to use that right there. There we go. And then I think next we will use some napkins. Okay, so my next layer, so I used scrapbook paper. So now I've used like book pages, music notes, and all that. Then I went to scrapbook paper. And then my next layer that I want to use is napkins. Beautiful napkins. So these are the napkins right here that I'm going to use. Isn't that pretty? And for your napkins, when you, I, what I like to do is I like to use a wet paint brush. I just need a small pointed one. There we go. You know you can't find what you want when you need it. Okay, there we go. Make sure you guys are seeing that napkin. Yeah, you're seeing that piece of napkin. Okay, so suppose I want like this flower right here, which is what I want. Just take a wet paintbrush. That's not a big enough one. Let me get something of a good size on it. And go around. And then what that does is when you go around it with wet, a wet paintbrush, it gives it like a perforated edge, so it just peels right around, and you can take exactly the part of the napkin you want, and you don't end up ripping the napkin. You don't end up ripping your image. Another big tip, and a lot of you guys probably know about it already, but I'll just say it anyway, is um, when you have like layers on your um, tissue on your napkins. Take a piece of tape, scotch tape, clear tape, whatever, put it on the back of the napkin and it'll take off the back of the napkins, one layer, two layer, three layers, and it does it really quick. So let me put this right here. There we go. This is so cool laying all this laying all these layers down and I'm not even wondering I'm not even worried about the focal point I'll match the focal point up to whatever I'm doing here but my my big thing is I want to um, do my collage which which is what I love and then I want to use the uh, inks over it to add color and then we'll find focal points to match all of this there oh that's pretty see all those layers that's gorgeous okay so we're done with that napkin I think and then I have one more napkin that I want to use and this napkin is gorgeous look how pretty that is I even like this part of the napkin right here where it has just that little bit of writing I think I'm gonna take that off and lay that down and then we're gonna definitely lay that the bird with the, the nest on there but I like this I think it's gonna go right here and napkins are so freeing because they're um you can see right through them, so you can feel comfortable. You can feel comfortable um, 
laying on top of other, you know, laying right over whatever, scrapbook paper or music notes or whatever it is because you can see through it. These napkins are gorgeous. I got these a long time ago at Tuesday morning. Absolutely love them. Gorge. All right, what do I want to do with this? It's kind of big to use all at once, but I love the whole thing. I wonder if I just want to just go over like right here or not. You know, let me see about splitting this napkin up in half. That's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like I need to split it in half, even though I really don't want to. Okay. Like these birds could go like right here. Okay. Pretty. And then the nest with the script writing, that could just go right here. Perfect. So what we'll do is we'll let this page dry. And when it dries, I will do a light gesso. And light gesso to me is I dip my brush in water, then I dip it into the gesso. And so I just give it a light film of gessoing, just so it gives me a nice um, surface to do the um, inks on. And you'll still see all of those layers below. And then you'll have all the color of the um, distress oxides. And also I might, I'll probably do some stamping also, if not also some stenciling on top. We'll see. Okay. So that page is done. We have to let that dry, right? All right. So let me, where's my folder? Oh, that's what I need to do. Let me take my folder. Sorry about my chair, guys. Let me take my folder and put all of this back into this folder. So we're nice and organized. And I have enough stuff that I can, again, do more pages and already have stuff pulled. So that's kind of cool. So I will do that. Okay, so now let's go to the next page, the next folder. So I have another folder full of goodies, right? Okay. So let me organize that. We won't, we won't go through the goodies. You'll see the goodies as we put them down. But I got a lot of goodies. Okay. I got a lot of goodies. Okay, that goes with that, and this all goes together. Okay, here we go. And let's scoot this book over so you can see here. Okay. All right. Next. Oh, I just, look how that looks. I am just, oh. I'm in love. I absolutely love, I just love seeing all of the different napkins and the book pages and just all the stuff put together. I just think it's, I just love looking at that. All right, let's get the, let's glue this whole, let's get the glue on the whole page. Um, how I make my, I said homemade Mod Podge. I'll talk about that really quick. I use Elmer's glue. And I use, I make it, let's say you make a cup at a time. I take about 10 squirts of a clear acrylic spray paint. So you can go to Walmart and get their brand. And it's just a clear acrylic uh, spray paint that's matte, not shiny, matte. And um, I put about 10 squirts in there, add a little water. The clear matte makes it, um, gives it a more matte surface. So it can be a more paintable surface. So that's why I put that on there. Okay, this is um, the directions of a uh, pattern. Isn't that fabulous? I bought the hugest things of patterns. And I like I used to like to use them in my junk journals a lot too. Um, I bought the biggest thing of patterns for five bucks. I probably bought 50 patterns in this bucket. And this lady, I go, how much for this? She goes, oh, five bucks. I almost passed out. I was like, do you know what you're selling me? <laughs> Because I can use this in my mixed media. I can use the actual pattern paper in my mixed media. I could stamp 
a bunch of the uh, pattern paper also with stamps and make like my own Tim Holtz tissue paper like. I mean, it's just so much. I mean, oh. she didn't know. She thought, oh, I guess she wants to sew. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I'm about to rip up these patterns. <laughs> and I've had them for years. This was probably six, seven, eight years ago, something like that. And I still have that big, huge, in the same blue container, too, that she sold them to me in. So let's put music note paper right next to the pattern paper, which I think is going to be fabulous. There we go. As I was thinking about that, um, I just saw this pattern right here, and I thought, you know what, let me just take that out so I can add that to my stash of stuff so I can use pattern, pattern directions and pattern paper more. Okay, so let's put that aside. This is cool. This is a periodic table of elements. Isn't that cool? I thought that would be really cool. Let's just use that whole darn thing right here at the bottom. Bam. I've started doing that more. I've started using big, like large sections of my paper instead of cutting it up in small pieces. You can still use some small pieces or use all small pieces, but I like the fact of using like a big piece like that and gluing it in. For one, it goes faster so I can start getting to more layers. <laughs> Not that I want to rush, just, you know, I'm excited to get to the next layer. Um, but I think it also looks really dramatic and really cool to do that. Um, dictionary paper. Just so I want to get as much white off as I can. Okay, so let's put that down here. There we go. And you guys, I have a surprise, something I'm giving away to everybody who wants it. I'm not going to say what it is. It's going to be a surprise, but it's coming up in the next few days. So I'll be making a video about it. It's just a, a gift to all my, my subbies. Um, it's something you can download and um, just a gift. We're all going through stressful times, and I think it's the time to definitely be giving, for sure. Well, it's always time to be giving, but especially now. It's not the time. Well, it's never the time to be mean, but especially now. Absolutely no excuse for being mean, saying mean things to people. People are stressed out. So do everything you can. And I know you guys know this. Do everything you can to just be nice and be kind and be supportive of each other. And even in your house, you know, try to um, be kind to each other and not snap at people and... I know it's not easy because, you know, you're, you're home all day with everybody, but try your best. It's not going to make it any easier if you're snapping at each other or snapping at people or being impatient. If you really think about it, it's a time that we can kind of relax as much as we can. But we, we don't really have anywhere to go. <laughs> so what are we rushing for? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. We're not rushing for anything. So take advantage at least of that, that you don't have to like be rushing to go anywhere, right? So you can take the time to be even more extra kind to your husband and to your kids and just to everybody, which we should be like that all the time anyway. So you guys know what I'm saying. Okay, this is the Asian newspaper I have right here, which I think is so cool. Okay, I just... 
just glued that down, which I absolutely love. And you know what I love about the Asian newspaper? It's very thin. It's almost like um, that Tim's tissue paper, almost. So, which normally, I mean, when you're collaging, actually, the thinner the better. I like thin. Okay, I don't, I usually tear, but I'm going to cut because I want that Asian writing right there. I want to put that here up here at the top. Cool. I normally like a torn edge, but I'm I like that right there. Sometimes we must cut. Right? Right. Okay. Moving on. Um just trying to make sure of everything I've done. I want, I want a little bit more music notes. Out of all my collage bits, I think music notes are my favorite. I just love them. I just love music notes. Especially music notes. And you do a napkin over the music notes. And then you see the music, note, music notes coming up underneath the napkin. I think that's fabulous. I think that's just fabulous. All right, let's just put that right there. Okay. Even if I was to use the same napkins, everything over oh, the same I did on this page, on this page, it would still turn out completely different. So let's suppose you're like, most of you guys probably have a lot of different stuff, but suppose you're like, okay, that's almost all the stuff I have. Use that same stuff again, and then do it again, and do it again. That would be interesting. Use the same pile over and over and over, and you keep doing it, you're still going to come out. It's going to look completely different every single time. Oh, and if you want to do this, and you don't have any distressed oxides to do, like I said, we're going we're gonna to do some distressed oxides over all of this when we're, when, once it dries and after we gesso it, um, you can use watered-down acrylic paint. And the reason I like these two, they're going to oxide or distress out. And also you can see through them because they're very um, transparent. So you can see through them. Um, but watered down acrylic paint can give you the same look as far as being transparent. They won't be distressed, but they'll be transparent and it'll give you the color you want. So don't worry if you don't have these oxides. I'm using the oxides because I have them and I've been wanting to play with them really bad. Okay, so the next thing I have is um, Tim Holtz tissue paper. So exciting. I have been looking at this tissue paper for years and I don't know why I didn't just go buy some. I, I mean, even when it was like on sale or just use a coupon or just even a regular price. That's how fabulous this tissue paper was and I just never went and got it. I, it was always on my mind, but I just never did it. Okay, so we're gluing that down. Oh my gosh, I love that. This page is going to be really vintagey. If that's a word. Let's put that right there. It's going to be very Tim Holtz, this page over here. I'm using a lot of Tim Holtz ephemera. Okay, if I don't settle on something, there we go. Slap myself. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Next is another Tim Holtz and it's a map. Look how cool that is. I'm going to use this piece right here because I just love this piece. Some of the map and then that little stamp right there I love. What do I want to do with that? Let's just put that right up here at the top. I know I'm covering over things, but it's okay. That Asian writing came right through. So now you have a map going over that Asian writing and over the book pages and over some of the music note and going over the pattern paper and you can see it all coming through that Tim Holtz tissue paper. Fabulous. Okay, so now there's some more Tim Holtz tissue paper. I think is gorgeous. Look at this with the birds. And I absolutely love this whole thing right there. I 
This is just going to go right in the middle because I just love it. I just think it's it'll go right here. Or what, will it go down here at the bottom? Let's go right there. You guys are like, girl, I cannot believe you just used that whole piece right there. Yes, I did. Yes, ma'am. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Absolutely love it. All right, now I have some, well, let me see what else. I have some other stuff that I was going to use, but I think I'm not going to use it. I had like all of this to use, see? But this isn't really going. Only thing I might use is some of this. Some of these, yeah, I'll use some of that, but not yet. Um, okay, I think there's enough of that Tim Holtz paper. Um, I do want to use this butterfly, this napkin here. This is a piece of napkin. I do. I'll show you that thing with the t with the tape and the napkin. Okay. See, if you do that, then it just comes off and just throw the tape and that away. All right, let me just kind of go around with my water and my brush to kind of take this butterfly out the way I want it. It's not just fabulous, just being able to wet it and then just be able to tear exactly what you want off the napkin without tearing into your design. In this case, tearing into my butterfly because I would be upset if I tore this butterfly. Okay. Let's put this butterfly right there. Gorgeous. Oh, I think that is so pretty. And look how different that page is from this page. See, this has more color. So when we'll use more distress inks that and dist distress oxides that have color, this is going to look more vintagey. This is more shabby chic on the other side. Absolutely love it. Um, I am going to cut some of this. These are like uh, Tim Holtz and it's like little pieces of tape measure, which I think are fabulous. And it's a little bit thicker, so lay, lay some heavy collage glue down because it's cardstock. So whenever you use the cardstock, you got to kind of glue it in kind of heavy. And I might take these and cut them up real small and just throw a couple here and there like this. See? Like little pieces. So I can put little pieces here and there. Here and there. And then um, I will let this dry overnight. Then we'll come back in the next video and we will, um, we'll come back in the next video and we will, um, I'll have the gessoing done. Oh no, I'll do the gessoing with you. We'll gesso the page, lightly gesso so we can see through the layers, right? And then, um, I'll put another piece right there. And then we'll add the distress inks and play around with those and then see if we're going to do any more stamping or um, stenciling. And then we'll need to put some focal points on. Okay. Okay. I love this 
Isn't this gorgeous? I got this at Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just trying to see if I want to put that anywhere. Yeah, I do. I'm actually going to go right over some things. A little bit over the birdie part, but not too much. I'll put that in right there. And you can still see that birdie one really well, but I think it's just the justification of that looks really pretty. Yeah, love that. Okay, um, and I think I want to add this for the last layer. Isn't this gorgeous? This is that, that um, wrapping paper that's like between tissue paper and um, a dryer sheet. <laughs> but you can see through all the layers, so I love it. Okay, let me rip some of it. I'm going to have to do a little bit of cutting to actually get exactly what I want out of it. So if you have to cut, you have to cut. Okay. I wanted to get this like perfume bottle right there and then that looks cool. Also, um, I want a little more writing on there, so I might just, well, just a second, we'll see. Okay, I see something I want. Well, actually, yeah, we'll just rip this. There we go. There we go. I like that piece kind of layered over that. Fabulous. And then this little piece right here can just go like that. Okay. Love it. And I think this page is done. Yeah, this page is done. Okay, so. Let's take um, our metal folder and put all these pieces back into the here. And this will be all ready for another session. So I'm kind of excited I created these little kits of ephemera, little ephemera kits. Okay. So let me put this down on the thing. And I said we're going to work an hour on doing these backgrounds. So I'm going to do one more background with you guys on this video. And then the last, the fourth one, um, I'll probably do off camera. Because I have four sets of those manila envelopes. So I'll do the fourth one off camera because I won't have time to do it on camera. Probably wasn't really good for my book, but whatever. Okay. All right. Yeah, we got about 10 more minutes before it's an hour. So let's put, let's put this in here to protect our work from before. Let's look at our third set. So here's our next set of napkins and our, of all the ephemera that we're going to be using, all the collage bits. So let me put all that down. Okay. So let's do this page here. And the fourth page, this one over here, we'll do I'll, I'll do off camera. But I'll show it to you guys, of course, when we come back. And... All right, so music note paper. All right, let's get glue over the whole surface. I 
I'm going to work fast because I got like 10 more minutes. Well, I'll just work for 10 more minutes. I'll try to go as fast as I can. But, um, because I do want to end this first section at an hour. Because what I'd like to do is be able to, like I said, combine videos so I don't have so many sections, like part one, part two, part three, part four. Hopefully I can just have like, you know, maybe two parts or three parts instead of like six. Okay. And I could wait days until I get all my parts done and not show them to you until I have the whole thing together as one big video. But then you have to, you know, some people don't like to watch videos for two hours at a time or an hour and a half at a time. Um, some people don't like it if you split it up. I think it's, I like when videos aren't sped up because then I can actually feel like I'm learning something. Because when the videos are sped up, it is harder to follow, especially if um, you're trying to get the idea of what the person's doing and you're trying to learn things. So anyway, that's how I feel about it. Some of you guys may not. Some people might be like, girl, I wish you would speed up your videos and do a voiceover. Shut up. <laughs> and you never know. Someday I may do a sped up video with a voiceover. Probably not because that's a lot of editing. And I don't know if I ever want to spend that much time editing. But, you know, <coughs> we'll see. Okay. Oh, look at this big old page of Asian writing. This is fabulous. Love it. I can ever get the. Very cool. Love that. So we got the base down of all that. So now they're going to go to scrapbook paper. This is all different things of scrapbook paper. And we are going fast. <laughs> you guys are like, dang, Angela, you're moving. <laughs> I sure am. And you know what's good about moving fast? You, um, <clears throat> you're not thinking about it. Things even come out better. I find out with this type of work, if you don't think so much. Glue and go. Your first decision is probably the best decision. Really. Your first instinct, you know. You see the time situation. love those butterflies okay and then gorgeous so this is all different scrapbook papers that I have in my stash love it so quickly you can build a page when you have just beautiful scrapbook paper on top of book pages. Oh, you can build the most beautiful page so quickly. So quickly. I like that piece of fence right there, right next to that rose, so it looks like it's breaking out from the rose. Okay. All right, so now we're going to napkins. I'm going to put this butterfly. You guys, I wish I had more of these. I think I got them at... Did I get these at Dollar Tree? Or did I get these at um, at Tuesday morning? I, I don't know. But all I know is I can't find any more. And I'm almost through with these beautiful, beautiful...
butterfly napkins. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at that. Oh, so obsessed. I've almost used them all. I don't think it was Dollar Tree. I think it was Tuesday morning because, you know, I had like maybe two or three packs. If it would have been um, Dollar Tree, I would have bought <laughs> five to ten packs, believe me. I know that sounds obnoxious, and it is, but when you see stuff like that for a dollar at Dollar Tree, you're not going to see it again. So, and when I buy them at Tuesday morning, they're like, you know, I, I'm spending like a dollar, dollar fifty on napkins, maybe two bucks, sometimes three. So, when they're a dollar and you really like them and you know you'll use them in your mixed media a lot, girl, pick up five to ten of them. It's kind of like the Tim Holtz, um, the Tim Holtz tissue paper, you know, buying these type of napkins and you're spending a buck. You wouldn't get Tim Holtz napkins for a buck. Well, I basically did get my Tim Holtz, um, tissue paper for around a buck because I bought it on clearance. But otherwise, if you're not buying it on clearance, you're going to spend five or six dollars. So for a pack of napkins for a dollar from Dollar Tree, yeah, five packs will last you forever. Yes, ma'am. I will buy, I will do that in a second. Okay, I am loving this. This is a Eiffel Tower. It's gonna go right there. Oh, I love an Eiffel Tower. And then I love this piece that's left over. Isn't that gorgeous? It's gonna go right there. gorgeous absolutely beautiful and I actually love this part too I just love this whole napkin um, do I want to put that right here yes I do oh there we go and it's pretty because there's um, some really pretty um, the paper pad underneath the paper pad paper underneath and it's coming up through the napkin it looks gorgeous and then my favorite you guys know this right here let me put some of that in oh that's pretty I like that how do I want to do that we'll do that right here That'll fit in right there. Love that. So beautiful. And let's do another piece of that. Um, we can need to break some of this up here. I feel so. Let's put that in right there. Perfect. Love it. What time do we have? Just about two more minutes. Okay. So I absolutely love this page. We're going to leave it alone like that. I had one more napkin, this one to put in, but I just don't want to put this in. I think that this is good right here. So you guys, um, get yourself, if you want to join me, get yourself a bunch of, um, Get yourself some book note, book pages, napkins, scrapbook paper, and do some collaging with me. And if you have some Distress Oxide or inks and you want to experiment with those, this would be a really good time to do it. Or any of your um, any of your paints, especially ones that you can um, see through them because you want them translucent so you can see all the layers. And if you have, um, if what you have is acrylic paint, pull those out and um, you can water those down. But that'll be in the next segment, okay? Okay, you guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you give this vi video a thumbs up, that'd be great. Any comments or questions, leave them below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram and let me know if you're gonna uh, try this out, um, these techniques, and if you have any distress oxide or if you're gonna use acrylic paint, let me know, all right? All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.